what is oxygen therapy for COPD? When I need to use it? It's really important that we separate out when someone has low oxygen in their blood by the pulse oximeter reading or by the blood gas versus someone who's just short of breath. Because a patient can be really, really short of breath and have normal oxygen. And I've had patients that have come to me that aren't that short of breath, but their oxygen is low. So that's why we need to measure this, the test. Patients with FEV1s less than around 50, 40 percent really should have it measured at every single visit. I personally measure the oxygen saturation at every visit in all of my patients, but I think it's very important with those with more severe lung disease. Now once the oxygen level is low and it's different, a little bit different in different um, patients depending on what other diseases they have, but certainly when it's 88, 87 percent, even 89 percent in some patients, when they're just sitting resting, that person needs to wear the oxygen 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now it's really hard, you know this, that patients, it's really hard for them to wear that um, all the time. So really the cutoff number is 16 hours a day. If they'll wear it at least 16 hours a day, every single day, then that reduces their chance of dying from COPD, like drastically. So the benefit that you get to use supplemental oxygen if your oxygen is low can reduce mortality? Absolutely. And it, it really, absolutely, it's the number one thing that we have that reduces mortality. We know other things reduce mortality as well, but oxygen is probably the biggest bang for the buck in patients with resting hypoxemia, meaning they're just sitting down. Now in those that have normal oxygen at rest, but then they walk and their oxygen goes down, right now we give them oxygen and we think that it's probably helpful. And there's a large study that's going on right now to really see the benefit of that. Because that hasn't been studied as well as those that have low oxygen at rest. We give about supplemental oxygen, so what are we talking about? What are what the patients get? And what kind of devices do they need to, they need to get? So there are lots of different types of devices. Most are given through the little nasal cannulas that you see patients walking around with. There are portable ones that they can, that they can walk around with. Some roll and are heavier. Some are liquid and they actually can carry them like on a little backpack. Then usually around the house there's a thing called a concentrator that plugs into the wall and they have a long cord that they can walk around their house with, a long tube, so that they can wear their oxygen. So I had a patient the other day that she told me, you know, they gave me these big cylinders that I need to carry around when I go anywhere, and she saw another person who had a little small device that told her they don't need any, any cylinders, it just plugs it in, that means the battery just needs to be charged. Uh, like what are those devices? What are we having now available? So now we have available these small, called portable concentrators, that rather than the big bulky machines, they can plug in either to the wall or to, like, to the cigarette lighter um, in the car, things like that, and they actually produce the oxygen there so you don't have to have the big cylinders. The big thing is cost, and so different plans cover different machines and, and devices, and so it's really important to figure out, so your patient's not paying out of pocket, what device their insurance company covers. I had a patient with bad COPD and oxygen that he wants to go on vacation and they want to travel and get in the plane. So what, what, I, should, what I need to do for that? So they definitely need to arrange the oxygen ahead of time. They're not allowed to take the machine with them on the plane. So they can have it up until they get in the airport mm -hmm. and then in the airport the airlines will arrange ahead of time to have the oxygen there. They can arrange to have the oxygen on the plane and then they need to have the oxygen company deliver some oxygen to them when they land. So it can be done, it just takes some planning. So they should be contact the airline too to be sure what is needed from their side in order to, to achieve that. Absolutely. 